What is going on, y'all? Let's start off with some videos as usual. Today, as you can see, we're going to be going over the 6.1 SRT8 Jeep. This is going to be the 2006 to 2010 model. This is some dyno videos. I say the Hemi is probably my favorite sounding engine out of all like three American brands. You guys can tell me what you think. Fair use, fair use. Sounds pretty good, but you hear a lot of dyno noise. Look, as you can see, I don't know what kind of dyno this is, but those numbers are super low compared to what the car is supposed to be making at the crank. Let's hear another video. This one's gonna be from the outside doing some donuts. Not bad. We got one more video. Just to hear that sound. This is good footage right here. Yeah, okay. There we go. What is going on, y'all? Onward and Cars back again with another Car Buyer's Guide. Today, as you saw already, we are going to be going over the Jeep SRT8, specifically, the, I guess, the Grand Cherokee SRT8. Uh, but even more specifically, we're going over the WK model, not the WK2, but the original WK model. This went from 2006 to 2010. And so, yeah, compared to some of the other models we we're looking at this week, this one is a little bit older. And I'm just going to say this off the bat. The prices are kind of kind of high for what this car is. But then again, I could more so align this car with... I don't know if you guys remember, we were looking at classic Japanese like JDM cars, RX-7, Honda NSX, Supra. I think this car kind of falls into that category in terms of nostalgia. People are paying those prices because it's the original Jeep SRT8. But other than that, let's take a look and see. Uh, actually, hold on. Let me... Yeah, let's bring up the features, options, and problems. But before that, some quick announcements. If you haven't already... Go ahead and like the video, hit that like button, helps me out a lot, it's free, it takes half a second, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, we're trying to get to 1500 subscribers, we just hit 1300, which was cool, but 1300 isn't that much of a milestone, 1500 is a little bit better, so let's get to that. Other than that, if you haven't already joined my Discord, all you gotta do is hit the link in the bio. As you can see, if you join my Discord, you're eligible to win 50 bucks, I do these drawings probably about once every two weeks, so... As you can see, yesterday I paid out Clean Whip. Shout out to Clean Whips in the chat. And shout out to Jacob Black in the chat too. Shout out to all of y'all. Shout out to the two other Ninja Watchers not saying anything was going on. I hope you guys are having a great Friday. So yeah, if you haven't already, like the video. And I think that's it. So let's get on to the features, options, and problems for the Jeep SRT8. Uh, let's see. Get that. Oh man, where did my notes go? No, oh, they're over here. Okay. All good. All right. So, as I mentioned before, 2006 to 2010 are going to be the years we're looking at. Kind of an older uh, example of a car. We haven't looked at this old of a car in a little bit. Most of the cars we've been looking at have been from the latest or the later part of 2010s. So, the, like the later half of the teens. But this one is a little bit older. We'll go over the WK2 in another video. Uh, I wanted to do this one first. I was going to combine the two. But then I realized they're kind of different cars. They have different engines, different platform. It's not really worth combining the two into one video, especially because the WK2 changed its name 
when it had its mid-cycle refresh in 2014 from the SRT8 to the SRT. So it's different name, different chassis, different engine. It's not the same car at all. So we're just going to stick with this one today, and then we're going to do a WK21 at a later time. So what makes this unique? It's going to be that 6.1 liter Hemi engine. So the 6.1 liter Hemi V8 found in SRT models of the time. So pre-2010 models, SRT8 Challengers or Chargers, SRT8 uh, Chrysler 300s, and of course, SRT8 Jeep. They all use a 6.1 liter Hemi. Later, it was replaced with the 6.4. That's commonly known as a 392. Uh, pretty famous nowadays, but this one was the big boy back in the day. It used a five-speed transmission, a Mercedes five-speed transmission. It made 420 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. These are crank numbers. We'll look at a dyno sheet in a second. It used four-wheel drive with the center electronically controlled clutch pack. So you could control or you could basically send up to 50% of the torque to the front wheels with this center electro electronically controlled clutch pack and then it had open diffs front and rear which is kind of surprising to me but it is what it is it also featured a dana 44 rear, rear axle so a beefier rear end than any other jeep it had performance tuned suspension it was actually one inch lower than a standard jeep grand cherokee and it features Brembo brakes bilstein monotube shocks and all models have the boost boost in boston acoustics premium sound system so these are just some things you want to look out for again this is going to be a jeep so you guys don't get your hopes up too high in terms of the interior quality of these cars or the quality in general it's not the best quality car uh, i think one thing about the this jeep that i have to say though is i really like this design it's weird because like when i think about a jeep grand cherokee srt i don't think about this design for some reason like I remember back in my day, in the day, like I remember seeing the center exhaust, but that's about it. Like even this rear end, it doesn't look, I don't know if it's just me. It's like a Mandela effect. Like I don't remember the Jeep looking like this. Look, it looks uh, really modern compared to in my head, what it looked like. Like this rear end looks really good. I don't know. You guys can let me know. Shout out to the four people in here. Halfway. <laughs> Hit the wrong button. Uh, but yeah, you two guys tell me, I think this car looks really good. And when looking at the WK versus WK2, I think the WK actually looks a lot better. It looks a lot cleaner. I really favor the boxy look. They smoothed it out for the WK2 as they did for almost every car model. Uh, you know, as things carried on in time, they became more sleek and smooth. That same thing applied to the WK2. But personally, I prefer the exterior look, especially this rear three quarter view of the WK1 over the WK2. Also, the center exhaust is just so unique. Obviously, it's not the most practical system because it's a Jeep. You kind of need to have, you know, your options in terms of towing a trailer. And this kind of made it impossible. Granted, there were some fixes. Like, some people added actually a small uh, tow hitch here. And it just kind of stuck out past the exhaust. But then you're kind of just dumping exhaust right onto your trailer. Yeah. No, actually, hold on. I'll just show you. Look. Uh... So you can see they put some downturn exhaust for this one. They put the trailer hitch, they stuck it out right there. Some people do it like this. So it is possible to have a trailer hitch with your rear center exhaust. However, it's probably uh, not very uh, practical just because I know that that piece, the tow hitch and the, that front part of the trailer is going to be absorbing so much heat. You're probably going to mess something up if it's not, you know, I don't know, rated to experience that heat. If you have like plastic on the front of your trailer or something, you might burn it up with this exhaust uh, setup. Anyway, let's get back onto the car. I mean, we were talking about the car, but let's get onto the options. So there are a ton of uh, different stuff going on with this car in terms of packages and individual options, and they changed year by year, but we will go over all of that, get you guys up to speed. Make this a little bit smaller. I'll make it a little bit bigger. How about 10? 11? Nah, 10's good. All right, cool. So um, let me just actually indent some of this stuff because I really don't want to be reading this wrong. So we tap. <laughs> okay, I guess that doesn't work. I don't understand. I guess the tab. Whoa, 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 hold on. 
so tab works over here sorry this computer is just not wanting to tab this stuff over okay whatever you guys are gonna have to read this the hard way oh my god this is blown. yeah i need to find a new program besides paint this is starting to frustrate me but it's all good we will get through it a shout out to the five people in here what's going on y'all so in terms of packages, we have the SRT1 group. This is going to be the most important package we're going to talk about today. So this is what it includes. If it says 2008 plus, obviously that's going to be those years plus. That's how this works. If you see a year next to it, it means that year plus. If there's no plus, it just means that year only. I believe most of these were added um, and then carried on through the rest of the model year. So they're all plus. What is this? Are you serious, man? Are you really serious right now? All right, I'm going to try this once and for all. Control A, and then do that. Yo, this is actually, yeah, this is starting to piss me off. <laughs> and that tab doesn't work either. How about I just bold it? I'll bold all of them because I don't feel like... Give me five seconds, y'all. Navigation group, Chrome appearance package. And then what else? So we're looking for touring package, touring plus, then individual options. There we go. That makes it a little bit easier to read. So as I've said before, the most important package we're going to be looking for today is going to be the SRT1 group. And that's what it's called, the SRT1 group package or group, if you want to just call it group. I don't know why American car company... American car companies always call their things groups and they have packages and then trims and then individual options. Just call it a package and an option. You can have two different things. Trim package option. I don't know why this group thing is like, it's like a group of packages or something. Anyway, smart beam intelligent high beam system. So it basically is auto high beams, infrared dual zone, climate control, Jeep memory system. So you have memory radio seat mirrors and pedals. These cars do come with adjustable pedals. So if you get the SRT one group, you have memory pedals. So they adjust back to where they were heated front seats, eight way drivers seat with memory, four way passenger seat with memory, sunroof, auto wipers. Those are going to be rain sensing. You have Uconnect connect and Sirius satellite radio park sense, which is going to be your parking sensors side occupant protection system that's going to be your side uh impact airbags deluxe door trim panels came out for the face of the model which came out in 20 2008 the face of the model included some changes on the front and rear fascia but most importantly the changes were in the interior i'll show you guys in a second that the trims actually or the default colors for the interior actually changed. there are only one uh interior set of colors that are available for the srt8 and that specific set of colors changed when it got facelifted we'll look at all that in a second so the srt uh and then the 110 or 115 volt power outlet came in 2008 as well the srt group also came in 2000 srt2 group i said srt8 group srt2 group 2008 plus so this includes the srt1 group so you can't get the srt2 group without getting the srt1 group but the srt2 group includes rear dvd entertainment system heated second row seats and hid headlamps it also includes the my gig multimedia entertainment system this is going to be the upgraded um entertainment system and then park view rear backup camera so it doesn't come with the park i mean par it doesn't come with the sensors it comes with the camera so and navigation group this also was a facelifted option as well so this came with the rear backup camera touch screen radio gps nav and rear park assist so you could have the rear backup camera the nav and the rear park assist without getting any of these SRT groups, if you just wanted the navigation, you could have that as well. You also had the Chrome appearance package, which was in 2009 plus. And so this used uh, Chrome side steps, Chrome fuel filler door, Chrome tail lamp guards and door sill guards. Not really that common to see. They look kind of tacky, but some people did uh, actually option this. But a side note, 2009 was actually the least sold year of the Jeep SRT8. So uh, it's really hard to find ones with the Chrome appearance package. I'm not really a big fan of the Chrome tail lamp guards. You'll see those. They look kind of auto zone -y, So not really a big fan of that one. The Touring Plus package. This one is actually the most confusing package because I'm really not too sure what it entails. Actually, this one is its own package too. So the Touring Plus package, again, this one should also say two, this one is actually only 2009 weird they only offered the touring plus package for the srt8 in the year 2009 it wasn't available from 2006 2008 it wasn't available in 2010 just for 2009 they allowed the jeep to have it but it 
here's what it says it comes with a body kit rear spoiler door sill guards front and rear premium floor mats chrome grill um i really didn't see any uh anything with the spoiler just uh spoiler alone was really hard to find and other than that you couldn't find cars with any of the other parts and i'm not really sure what the body kit means because the srt8 came with the body kit to begin with so yeah someone else have to clarify that for me because i'm really not sure what the touring plus package is for 2009 and i spent a lot of time researching that no this is actually this is the 2006 to 2010 uh srt so this is the first the og one um and then the srt high performance audio and nav group i believe this was actually man this was either 2009 or 2010 only i didn't write the year unfortunately but this included the srt1 group so you had to get srt1 and then this came with 11 kicker speakers gps nav and park view rear camera so this was also an option to look out for we'll go over the brochure in a second to really narrow down the years that this specific stuff was available because i didn't write it down unfortunately yep exactly the granddaddy the mac daddy the one that started it all and then individual options obviously your color granted there are very few colors it's like four or five colors you got like a white you have this blue you have a red you have a black i think that's it actually um but yeah we'll look at the colors in a second and then you had remote start you had your rear dvd entertainment system as a standalone option you could option that if you wanted the full screen dvd based nav it was dvd based until 2008 when they did the facelift then it became uh, a simple hard drive based nav and then side occupant protection system, obviously they off they offered this as an individual option. They didn't want to price people out of safety uh, because if you if it wasn't an option, you'd have to get the SRT1 group uh, package. And then you connect web 2009 plus, I guess it's allowed you to connect your car to the web to download like certain apps, but I'm not really too sure. I haven't really seen anyone use this and I don't think anyone will, especially in uh, today's day and age. But let's take a look at the packages because uh, we'll see the differences year by year. So this is going to be 2006, the first model year. As you can see, these are going to be your colors. I do believe that these are colors for like the... Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. So four is only available for the SRT8. So black is available for the SRT8. Bright silver is available for the SRT8. And Inferno Red. So in the first model year, you had three colors that were available for the car. Uh, what else? Let's scroll down. As I mentioned before, these are going to be the packages. Um, no, oops. let's see. It was right here. I remember uh, this was right here. This is the package SRT one group in 2006. This was the only package available. Everything else was an individual option. You can see though, all the, the options here that say P come with the SRT one package. So there's only a few O's here. The O's rear DVD entertainment, full screen GPS, Remote start. That's pretty much it. Those are going to be your only. Uh, did these come with SRT pages? No, unfortunately, they did not. So SRT pages came in the WK2 model. In WK1, this was like the OG, simple, like nothing fancy about this at all. As you can see, there weren't even that many options. For 2006 alone, there was one package and like four options. As you can see here, this is that touring package. So you see it's available for every other model year. And it says like this. For every model year except 2009 where the o is in the srt8 column so moving on to 2007 see the colors again not available on, i can't even read that man what does this say so not available on srt8 are gonna say one so uh th this color is available for 2007 this color is available for 2007 this color is available for 2007, and then this color is available for 2007. So those four colors I was talking about, black, silver, uh, steel blue, and red rock, crystal pearl. Those are going to be your four colors. In terms of the interior, um, so I didn't mention this earlier. I was trying to see if they had any pictures. So you can see this, this seat right here. This is the interior of the pre-facelift Jeep SRT. It's not black. As you can see, it's this gray color. Not really the best looking seat. And when the whole interior is this color, it actually looks a lot brighter than it does here. It says it's a uh, medium slate gray, but when you look at them in real life, they look actually almost like a, not like a slate gray, but like an actual gray, like a, almost like a silver. It doesn't look that good at all. Let's take a look at the facelifted. So this is going to be a 2009, where's the 2008? 2008, 2006, where's seven? Oh, there we go. I was looking at the wrong year. That's why I was confused. All right, cool. So let's move to a 2008 so we can see the facelifted 
interior so as you can see now it actually became black they call it dark slate gray before it was a medium slate gray but now they actually became black i highly recommend going for a facelift just simply because of this the interiors on the facelift just look so much better but as you can see 2008 um not available this was actually the 2008 we were looking at earlier so black silver steel blue and red let's look at some 2009 examples pretty much stayed the same one thing i thought was weird was they show all the paint colors and then they included grand wagoneer right here which makes no sense it's like they just wanted to show it off they're really trying to harken back to their glory days and just included the grand wagoneer it doesn't even say the color it just says the name of the, the truck a jeep wagoneer grand wagoneer so not really too sure what's going on there also, in terms of wheels, you only get one choice of wheels for the SRT8. It's going to be this 20-inch five-spoke wheel. If it has any other wheels, they're going to be aftermarket. And then going here, you can see we're on 2009 right here. We see the touring package is available for the SRT8. Not sure if this is a typo, but the more I think about it, the more this probably is a typo. And this, this open dot should be for the overlander or overland model and this solid dot should be for the srt8 but in terms of colors four um so we had black you have red you have blue and you have silver same thing i think it remained the same four colors all four model years or all five model years so the ones with the star aren't available okay cool so um let's see yeah, it doesn't really specifically say which ones aren't available for SRT8. I guess this would say one. I just can't read that. So these two aren't available. So same four colors. Clara asks, what do you think was the target market? So I think the target market... Actually, hold on. This is what I was thinking. ML63 AMG. I actually don't know the years of this. So do we not have, I don't want a GL. All right, so this was the ML. Where's the ML 63? Okay, I'm looking at it right here. Yep, so what I think this car was meant to compete with was the ML63 AMG, especially because Chrysler launched this car as an international car, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you saw in the beginning of the video, but a lot of the cars had Euro plates. A lot of them are right-hand drive. So this car was actually a world car. One of the few, one of the, actually the first, I'd say world cars from Jeep. I mean, I guess the Jeep has always been a world car. Let me just stop because I just made that up. The Jeep <laughs> definitely is a world car, but uh, prior to Stellantis, Chrysler Dodge was a American company and obviously they had brand relations with Mercedes and um, Daimler, I guess, which is Mercedes, but they, uh, they uh, were, I guess one of the first, I don't want to say the first, cause this came out too. So these were like one of the two earliest high performance SUVs on the market. So if I were to say it had any competition, it would be the ML 63, but I can't think of any other high performance SUVs from the time. But yeah, I think other than that, the target market was just young people who wanted a fun car. Like that's kind of Dodge's target market in general right now. And so I think this kind of, uh, well, SRT's target market, I guess, they want to produce uh, high performance versions of that are at a, on a budget, I guess. <laughs> that's what I say. It. SRT makes the best high performing cars for the best price. Um, but other than that, I'm not really too sure what the target market was. All I know is that whatever niche they created became super popular because they sold over 75, well, including the WK2, they sold over 75,000 SRT and SRT8 models uh, between 2006 and 2021. Um, Yeah, so I remember last show, someone asked to see some dyno charts, so I got one for you today. So here is a stock dyno chart for a WK SRT8 on paper. At the crank, it makes 420 wheel horse or 420 crank horsepower, 420 pound feet of torque. And as you can see on this dyno sheet at the wheel, it makes 360 and 361. So 
sounds about right. It's about down about 60, 70, no, around 60 horsepower, 60 pound feet of torque. So it's not that far off from the crank. And it is a four wheel drive system with a center and electronically controlled diff. So that also sucks some of the power out as well. So this actually isn't too bad, but 360 wheel, that's what you should be expecting. I know that this was the fastest SRT model of the time, or oh, second fastest. The Viper obviously was the fastest. This was the second fastest. It was faster than the char faster than the Charger and faster than the Chrysler 300 because of the four wheel drive system. So this wasn't a slow car by any means. Um, let's see. Related topic. He said they're bringing the Skyline back to USDM, but it has high performance SUV. Really? I did not know that. That seems like kind of a waste of a name. I don't know why car companies always do that. They change the a sports car into like a high performance SUV or like at least that's what they try. The worst example, I think, is actually the uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. That is the worst car I've ever seen. The worst naming. I think second will be the Ford, Mach the Ford Mustang Mach-E. I didn't even want to call it a Mustang. Um, yeah, Ford Mach-E. I don't know why they call it a Mustang. What, else, what other cars companies did that? They took their car name and turned it into SUV. I'm sure there's some more. But yeah. Uh, what else was I going to say? I guess we can get on to the problems, which is surprising that there aren't too many problems with this. Besides just quality issues, it is a mid-2000s Dodge product. But I don't really have too much to say about the problems. Um, I couldn't find any problems really. Like, Besides the problems with the, the Hemi itself, the 6.1, which are not that common because not only is it supposedly a more reliable version, um, but it also wasn't produced as much compared to the 5.7 and the 6.4. The 6.1 wasn't made in as big of a numbers so it's harder to find the actual problems that went wrong because it's not reported as much but in terms of simple things that you want to look out for with these hemis is roller lifter failure this is going to be the biggest issue so 70 to 120k miles usually when this happens and it's like a four to five thousand dollar job basically the needle bearings they um they they fall out because they get worn down and then you have metal on metal uh, just uh, rubbing on your camshaft lobes and it wears down the lobe and pretty soon before you know it your valves won't open and your car is not going to run good it's going to have a rough idle the check engine light's going to come on and it's not an easy fix you're going to have to get a whole pretty much a whole new uh, top end of the engine if there wasn't any catastrophic failure if there was and it affected the rest of the engine probably have to get a new engine this had this did happen to some early examples of the car and they were replaced by warranty, but these cars are kind of old now, so you're not going to have that warranty to fall back on. So you definitely want to make sure that the car isn't ticking, and it's hard to even determine whether or not the ticking, if you even hear it, is due to the rollers or just due to something else. It could be an exhaust leak. It could be something else. A lot of things on the engine make ticking noises, not just the roller lifters. Cherokees and Blazers. Hey, shout out to you, Drew. What's going on, Drew? Hey, I'm actually coming up to Maryland next weekend, so we got to hang out. Um, yeah, what's up? going on, Drew? I appreciate you coming through, my man. That's what's up. Anyway, so another thing we got to look out for is the spark plugs and coils. This is a high-performance car, so you're going to have these issues. Spark plugs, coils are going to go a little bit prematurely compared to, like, say, a normal car. And then, um, yeah, so just make sure that your car runs right. This is all in terms of, like, you can tell if it's running good if you hear it. Um, the idle, just making sure that the idle sounds good, making sure that it has good throttle response. And then, yeah, other than that, this car is a bunch of random electrical issues. So you'll have issues with like random electrical systems with the car, not really anything you can predict. You just need to make sure that when you're looking at these, you have to test out everything, test out the HVAC, test out the radio, make sure none of the speakers are blown, test out the sunroof. It, if it has one, you want to see, make sure the seats go up and down and they're not like crackly i don't know how to describe it but they're going up smoothly they're not like getting binded or anything you want to make sure that um just the interior plastics are in good shape i know on wk2 specifically they have leather dashes and those dashes seem to become coming apart i'm not too sure i don't think that th that was a big problem on the earlier models um like these ones the wks um other than that yeah just overall build quality just make sure that the car you have i would recommend staying away from a tuned example these engines do really well when they're stock. However, when you're adding force induction to it, obviously with any engine that you're adding force induction that wasn't designed for, for the fact from the factory, you're going to have some issues long-term. 
just make sure when you're looking at this car overall see whether or not the door panels have been taken off see whether or not they added say a supercharger and then took it off check to see that the lights are good i know some people have installed like hid and led lights and that messes up the electrical system so little things like that can have an issue on these these cars like to stay stock but yeah other than that there really isn't much to go wrong with these cars they are pretty simple and the transmission the the powertrain is pretty robust I'd say the weakest point is just the overall build quality and materials. So before we get into the ads, real quick, hit the like button on this video. Shout out to the eight people in this chat right now. If you haven't said anything at all and you're new here, say what's up. Say where you're from. I'm trying to see where you guys are at. And also what car you drive. And to you, Drew, how's that Jeep going? I know your Cherokee has been under the knife for a minute. Did it ever get finished? I know you were talking about taking it to some guy to have a whole bunch of work done because he was like an expert. So I don't know if you ever got that done or not. But yeah, as I said, like the video if you haven't already. Let's get to 20 likes for this one and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Cool. All right, let's move on to the ads. Oh, over here. But going to Facebook as usual, our first spot we look at ads. Looking at our first example, we have a first model year 2006 SRT8. As you can see right here, it's in black. These look like the wheels, but in black. They painted them. Overall condition of the car isn't too bad. I mean, it, it looks a little rough right here, but nothing that, you know, a good wash can't fix, hopefully. I don't know if it's just dirty or what. But as you can see, body looks in overall okay condition. The paint looks all right. I, I can't tell if it just needs a wash. But this is what I was talking about in the interior. As you can see, for these Early models, the pre-facelift 2006 to 2007, they had this old style interior. One thing to tell the difference off the bat is the center console. The center console stack on the older cars has its own hood like the uh, instrument binnacle. However, on the facelifted cars, the center console is flat on top. That's the easy way to tell. Other than the fact that the interior color is all gray for the pre-facelift cars and on the facelift cars are black. So let's keep looking. You can see. Right here, the seat is all torn up. That's why they didn't want to show it in, like, they barely show it. You can see right here, bolsters are all messed up. Something, as I mentioned, this has to do with the quality issue with this car. You want to make sure that the car is in decent quality or in decent shape. They don't seem to stand up to wear and tear as well as, you know, like a European car. In terms of the quality of the interior, I understand that, you know, European cars, they often break too, but the quality is a lot higher. You can see, it is a 2006, so it's not going to have HIDs or anything. These are going to be those standard lamps. A good way to tell that it has HIDs or not, the HIDs have like this Mercedes-looking logo in the outside lamps with the HID bulb in the center. And the regular, uh, I guess these are halogens. Not really too sure what they are, but the regular lights have just a single line going down the middle. So yeah, looking at the interior, we see it has a lot of wear. This car is 168,000 miles, so pretty high mileage we can see it has a sunroof option it also has a nav so this is you know for the most part fully loaded it has the srt1 group package which is pretty much the only thing you can get on the first model year see what he has to say about it clean title that's good 168k miles clean title power windows power locks automatic transmission cd player runs the drives gate cruise control okay cool so a bunch of non-information Engine bay looks okay. You want to just look at the engine bay on these cars, make sure that it isn't anything really messed with. You don't want to see any like loose wires or anything or any sort of rat's nest. That wouldn't be ideal if you're picking one of these up. That means it's probably been messed with. So for me, 168,000 miles and it's in very rough shape. Um, yeah, 13.4 is way too much. That seat is destroyed. I'd say for this one, I'd be willing to go up to $9,000. Moving on to our next example. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wow. Well, we got some extra ads today. I don't feel like going through these and because I was trying to narrow it down, but then I, I guess I kind of just ran out of time, but we're going to go through all the ads. It's all good. You guys are going to get some extra content today. This one, we have a red example. We can see, actually, hold on. Let me look at this first one. Nope, I was about to say. The last one has a chrome gas cap, which could point to the chrome package, but the chrome package didn't come out till 2011, and it also features a chrome grill, which this one does not have. That's why I was going to say Anyway, here we have a 2006, another 2006 example, except this one's going to be in red. We see that it also has, it also has black wheels. Interior on this one looks a lot cleaner, though. You can see the difference. The bolsters are actually in shape. The seats actually look really good for the mileage, 92,000 miles. So not low amount of miles, but the interior was 
taken care of way more than the last example we looked at. Again, this gray interior just looks so bad to me just because I know that it gets better with the facelift. But this is where you can save some money. As you can see, it has the sunroof as well as the rear uh, DVD entertainment system. So fully optioned car here. As you saw, it has nav as well. Also the dual zone climate control. It's another way to tell it has the SRT1 group package. So this car is just really clean. The engine bay is actually dirtier than the interior. Um, the interior, well, I guess that's normal. But this engine bay doesn't look too bad. It looks like it has regular wear and tear. It actually looks worse than the engine bay we looked at earlier. So you just want to make sure that all these wires and hoses are good. This one looks like it was, I don't know what's going on here, but you just want to make sure nothing's bounded up or anything like that. Simple stuff. This one, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to see anything else I can see on it. I don't think it has, I think the HID option came in 2007 and then became standard on 2008. So yeah, you can see this one has a standard headlights too. But other than that, just a very clean example, especially for the mileage. They want $19,000. So a little bit higher than before. Let's see what they have to say. So it has all stock except for a cold air intake and a great sounding board leg exhaust. Okay. And the upgraded exhaust is always good for one of these. And it doesn't add much to the price, but it's always good to have. Um, let's see. Doesn't really say anything about the options. So uh, not really that helpful. But as I mentioned before, very clean example. I'd say because this one's so clean and it has under 100,000 miles, you're still going to have to worry about the valve issue or the roller lifter issue for these because it is getting to that amount of miles. Around 100,000 miles, I say, is when the Hemis start to have problems. So that's something you got to take into consideration. You know, if the car was taken care of very well, like it shows right here, one owner, so the guy uh, hopefully took care of it like this all of its life. That means it should be regularly changed. I mean, the oil should be regularly changed. And just based off that, based off that assumption alone, the Hemi should be good in this car because the biggest factor um, leading to that failure in the roller and lifters is lack of lubrication. And that can be caused by not changing oil on time. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I didn't, did I even say it in the problems? Yeah, I didn't even say it, but oil consumption is also a problem. So that combined or oil consumption will lead or yeah, oil consumption will lead to your rollers failing because there isn't enough lubrication. Cool. This one's pretty much fully loaded for 2006 and they want 19 grand. I say for me, it only has 92,000 miles. I don't want to pay 19 grand though. That's kind of a facelifted price for me. I say for this one, $15,000 or where I'd be at. And moving on to our next ad, we have another 2006, a lot of 2006, I should have narrowed it down. But we can see this one is in black with the silver wheels. I like this one. This one looks the best to me so far. One thing I don't like is the fact that I don't know what's going on here. Uh, let's take a look at another example. Yeah. Um, as you can see, there isn't much overhang with the lights. Oh, there is on this one. So it might be a factory thing. At which, what do you want me to add to the soundboard? Um, yeah, because I got extra space on this soundboard. I can add a lot of things. Um, yeah, I mean, so far this one looks good. I'm not too sure about this hood gap. Uh, it looks like it might be common on cars, but I'm not too sure. We can see. Looks like it has an exhaust system on it, too. Interior is going to look okay. This one's kind of in the middle between the two examples we looked at before. It's not the nicest, but it's not bad. Trail rated badge? What are you talking about? Unless you're behind. Anyway, let's get back to this. Um, oh, the foghorn. Yeah, I should add that. <laughs> That's a good one. So this one already, we can tell it has the rear entertainment system, the DVD based system. Also does it have, it also has a dual zone climate control. So there's going to be an SRT one group with the DVD system. So pretty much fully loaded car. 127,000 miles. So a little bit higher than the last example. This one's kind of in the middle overall, but I do like the spec on this one the most. This one sound, or this one sounds. This one looks really good. Yeah, this. <laughs> um, sixteen nine. They're asking. You know, they're they're not too far off. It does have one hundred twenty seven thousand miles though. So, either it, it's been having problems for a while, or it didn't have problems, or it might have problems soon. So, so it's kind of risky. The more miles they're on these cars, really, the riskier it gets with this lifter issue i'd say for this one having 127,000 miles but being in a better exterior spec than the other one for this one i'd be at fourteen thousand five hundred dollars and moving on to this one we have another 
SRT8, but this one is going to be a 2007 model. We can see that this one also has an aftermarket hood, which isn't paint matched. Not the best looking option or upgrade in my opinion, but to each his own. 127,000 miles are asking $20,000. We can see this one also has the SRT1 group. It also has some pod gauges on the side too, but we can see dual zone climate control that automatically says SRT1. We can see also the nav package here. Not sure. This lo actually looks like an aftermarket nav system but it did come with the but it did come with the nav package from the factory see back here no rear entertainment but these pictures aren't the best let's see what he has to say clean title had it about six years has a supercharger okay so this one's boosted so i tried not to get boosted ones but i did not realize that this one was boosted pushing about 600 wheel horsepower so you can see that when you boost these cars the power goes up some significantly and it has 127,000 miles. So if you're into something like this, you know, a lot of people who are into these cars will be into a boosted Jeep. That'll be even better. That's this is literally a track hawk from back in the day. Um twenty thousand dollars, you know, isn't too bad, I'd say, but because it's been modified, though the modifications are great, this is like a big upgrade to have. It's not gonna add the full value of the modifications. I said I'd pay 14.5 for the 2006 model. I'd say for this one having a blower on it, I'd be willing to go up to $17,000. Moving on to our next one, we have a 2008 model. So it's gonna be a facelifted version. We can see it's also on some WK2 wheels. These aren't stock wheels to so the WK, or the WK1, whatever you wanna call it, but has some upgraded wheels, but they are from a Jeep as well. Looking at the interior, we can see it's actually black now. Looks a lot better, granted. When compared to other interiors we looked at on the show, this one does look very basic, but it is an upgrade over the pre-facelift SRT8. I think this one is well worth the money. It looks a lot more comfortable, and the black is just so much better than the gray. We can see also, as I mentioned before, it is a facelift. The center part is flat as opposed to having its own hump in the pre-facelift models. What else can we see here? I think it has the rear entertainment. Yeah, it does have the rear entertainment. So this might be a SRT2 group car. It's actually, yeah, I'm looking at these hood things. I guess that's just the way the hood is. The, la the lights are like inset from the hood. Let's actually look. Let's see what the SRT groups. So rear DVD entertainment, heated second row seats, HID headlamps. So can we see the, so this does have the rear heated seats as well. So. Let's look finally at the headlamps and we can see the Mercedes TriStar logo looking lights. So this is an SRT pack or an SRT2 group car, the fulliest, the fulliest, the fulliest loaded car you can get. What other options were available that we missed maybe? The fulliest option car, I like that. Um, yeah, I guess you could get, so this is a 2010 and plus the SRT high performance audio. So you could have that on 2010, but this is a 2008. So this is as good as it's going to get SRT group, SRT two group car. Gosh, I can't speak today. It is Friday. Nothing to say in the description. So for this one, they're asking 169 and it has 124,000 miles. This is what I'm talking about. Y'all these are the pre facelift cars. Like people don't seem to price them correctly. They seem to price them the same as a facelifted car, even though the facelifted car is way more valuable. It has a way better interior and it's just a newer car. 124,000 miles. The last one, I said I would pay seven, or let's go to this one. This one was 127,000 miles for 2006. And I'd say I go down to, I'd say, what did I say? 14.5 or something like that. I'd say for this one, wow, I'm not even there yet. I'd say for this one, being in 2008 with 124,000 miles and being an SRT2 group car, I'll be willing to go up to 15.5 for this example right here. If it all checks out, you know, and I don't know if it does because I don't see anything about the title here, but if it was a clean title, I think, yeah, 15, 15.5 even would be a great price. I'm not sure what I said, honestly. <laughs> 15, 15.5 15 I think would be a really good deal if it had a clean title. Here we have a 2008 example, another one in black. I think black's my favorite color for this one, especially with the silver wheels. Let's take a look at the interior spec. We can see he has $5. That's pretty cool. Um, silver wheels, chrome wheels. Has tinted headlights, which are interesting. Helps them work more, I guess. Um, looking at the headlights, it doesn't look like it has the HIDs either. We can see, I'm trying to see if it has a sunroof or not. I think it does. I think this is actually a sunroof right here. So it has a sunroof 
And it has dual zone climate control, I'm assuming. Wow, these pictures are horrible. Who took these? All right, let's look and see if he shows the inside of the car. Of course not. Okay. Like, ugh, man, these pictures are horrible. Like, what is this? I hate people that record sideways like this. Like, pick one. Portrait or landscape. Don't do no weird angles. Show the center stack, man. Oh, my God. All right. Never mind. That didn't help at all. Um. Yeah, he doesn't want to show the center console at all, so I can't tell. Exa oh, here we go. So, it is an SRT1 group car. The car looks like shit anyways. You don't like this car? I actually prefer... Well, I don't like these headlights, but I actually prefer the first-generation SRT8 in terms of its styling compared to the WK2, the more common one. I think this has so much road presence. Every time I see one on one of these on the road, I get excited. They look so cool, especially, like, the front end. This, this isn't a good example to see, but these pictures are horrible. I don't know why. Like, oh, my sideways pictures are so cool, like... They're not that cool. All right. SRT1 group car. 101,000 miles are asking 16.5. You know, that's not too far off at all. It's SRT1, not fully loaded, but it has the essentials. I'd say for having 101,000 miles, I'd be willing to go up to $15,000. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one is not the best example. These pictures make it look 10 times worse. So if you take pictures like this, you should uh, fix up your, your picture game. Anyway, here we have a 2010. So last model year for the SRT8 with the 6.1. We can see it's on black WK2 wheels. Like that red one we looked at earlier. See this one though? The body looks pretty clean. Took pictures in the snow. You can see you got some wear on the bolster right here. But other than that, it doesn't look too bad. We can see on the back uh, center console here, we do have rear heated seats. So if they're going to show maybe... Okay, so it has rear heated seats. Nothing in the description. I'm trying to see whether or not it has the DVD package. I guess not. I guess it just has rear heated seats because the DVD thing would stick in right below it. So let me take a look at this because this is a 2010. I just want to see if the rear heated seats was an option by itself. Heated second row seats. Yeah, I mean, it came with the P, so the SRT1 group. So, yeah, it has SRT1, obviously, but no SRT2. The SRT, oh, the reheated seats actually came with SRT1 in 2010. That's interesting. I mean, let's read for 2019 because I just want to make sure I get this correct. Let's see, SRT1. Uh, actually, hold on. We got to go to the seating over here. Heated second row seats. No, they came in. They came standard with all facelift cars in SRT1 group. Heated seats. No, they came in option group two for 2008. Okay, option group two for 2000. Okay, let me just get this right. Okay, I read this wrong. It said must have SRT option group one, but it comes in option group two. So if it has the rear heated seats, it has option group two. I stand corrected on that. So... This car is an option group two car. The thing is, I they didn't show the rear entertainment, and I don't know where that system is, because usually it's sitting in the rear center console, but I don't see it. Anyway, for this being an SRT2 group car and having 137,000 miles while being a last model year, we can see some work has been done on the engine bay. This is what I'm talking about. This is what you want to avoid. You don't want to see all these loose wires. This is a problem, especially sitting right here. This is a really hot area of the car, so... This is not something I'd be too excited about finding. But other than that, 2010, last model year, most desirable year, it's SRT2 group car. Has pretty much everything, but it's a 2010, so it's missing the high-end audio system package. What's it called? The high-performance audio and nav group, so it doesn't have that, but it is SRT2 group car. I'd say because it's SRT2, that's about 90% of the options right there. I'd be willing to go for 147 or 137,000 miles. I'd be willing to go up to $13,000. Which is kind of low for a 2010, but 13, we'll stick with it. Moving on to Auto Trader. We have our first. Well, these aren't even in order, man. What is going on? This one should be here. Moving on to our <laughs> moving on to Auto Trader. This is gonna be our first example. Hey, first of all, shout out to the seven people that are in here that are sticking around for the show. I really appreciate y'all. 
and yeah like the video here we have the first example 2007 srt8 with the srt option group one so off the bat we already know it's srt option group one so it should have the regular standard features we can see it is a preface of car with the ugly interior has the backup camera option as well as you can see dual zone climate control characteristic of the srt1 this one has 148,000 miles you know what i'm starting to notice i'm starting to notice that these 2006 and 2007 models are more expensive than the facelifted models and i don't know why someone will have to explain it to me but every single 2007 and 2006 model i've seen has been the same price or around the same price given the amount of miles as the facelifted models and in my mind i would value the face of the ones a lot more because the interior is so much better but yeah, someone has to explain that to me. This one is 148,000 miles red with the chrome wheels. They want 16 grand for it. I'd say because it's a 20, I'd say because this is a 2007 and it has so many miles, 150,000 miles. Um, you know, I guess it's fully loaded for what it is. It has the rear backup camera. It has a nav. It has the SRT one group. I would be willing to go up to $11,500. I think that's way too many miles for this, especially being a pre facelift example. Moving on to our next one, we have another red one. This is also going to be 2007. And as you can see, the prices are going up. I don't get this at all. 151,000 miles for this one and even higher of a price. I, I don't get it. Let's see what we're working with, though. I mean, it's a clean car, kind of. The SRT8 is peeling a little bit. Interior looks okay. This is 2007, as I mentioned. So it has the old style interior. You can see how bad it looks. This almost is comparable to like the first gen, like the early editions of the Hummer H2. That's what the interior looked like. It had the same kind of vibe, this gray, and then they switched it to a black when they, um, you know, updated the model a little bit. But as we can see here, this one has the SRT1 group. We see it has dual zone climate control as well as a space for the nav. Granted, this one does have an aftermarket nav system. Also has the rear DVD entertainment. Did they have the SRT2 group in 2007? Let's take a look real quick. No, they did not. Just SRT1 group. So it has the rear backup camera. It has the park view. And it has the sunroof. Oh, and it has nav. Yeah. Cool. So this is pretty much fully loaded for 2007. Nothing really missing here. This Oh, I guess it folds out like that. Okay, I got it. I got it. So 2007, pretty much fully loaded. But it has a ton of miles. And the price is really high. 17.7 for this. And they want 150. And it has 151,000 miles. For me, I mean, it, granted, it is a fully loaded 2007, but it has 151,000 miles. I'd be around the $11,000 mark. <laughs> I don't like. I don't get it. Someone have to explain it to me. Cool. Now we're moving on to the facelifted cars. We have a black example. Black on black. We're on the five star wheels, obviously, but they're in black. We see this one also has the spoiler. So this one, I was thinking maybe this one's a touring package, but of course it's not. The grill is not chrome, so I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand the touring package and why for 2009. I mean, it's not even 2009, so it couldn't be the touring package, but it has a wing, has a little spoiler. You really don't see these on the cars. Um, so you guys can tell me. Looking at the interior, though, it looks pretty nice. We can see the regular wear and tear right here. This is where it seems to wear a lot on the side right here. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Sunroof and rear entertainment, as you can see. So I'm assuming this is an SRT2 group car. We'll take a look and see if they show the rear center console. Yep, they do not show the rear center console. Of course they don't. But it has the rear, or it has the entertainment package. Let's look at this for, uh, just to get a good reference. So packages, let's see. Yep, SRT2 group includes rear HIDs, my gig, park view, rear backup camera. Okay, so let's check to see if it has HIDs. It does not have HIDs. All right. So this is not an SRT2 group car. It just has the rear entertainment package. So SRT1 group with the rear entertainment package. So not fully loaded at all. Yeah, for this one, 11 grand. <laughs> oh, wow. I was looking at the wrong example. I'm tripping, man. 2008. Well, um, wow, I completely tripped myself up there. <laughs> looking at the wrong example. Anyway, let's go back to what I was looking at. This SRT option group two. We're looking for HID. So... It's 2008. It should have HIDs. And if it doesn't, we already know. Yep, HIDs, as you can see, easy to spot compared to the regular lights. Oh, I thought it was like missing a rear window, but that's just, it's that clear. <laughs> okay, cool. So, SRT2 group car, 52,000 miles. They want $27,000 for this example. 
Granted, this is a really nice example. This would be something that you'd want. It has SRT2. It is a facelifted car, and it has really low miles. You really don't see them with this many miles. This one has been taken care of pretty well, even though this is a lot of bolster wear for only having 52,000 miles. For me, though, being that it is a low mile and it's an SRT2 group car, I'd be willing to go up to $21,000. <laughs> Some people are going to be upset today. I'm waiting for all the Jeep... Uh... <laughs> right. All, I'm waiting for all these crazy Jeep people to come in because, you know, I always talk about like I, I made enemies with the Honda group. I've made enemies with the Porsche group. I made enemies with the Kia group. I'm wondering if these OG SRTA people are going to come from my neck because I'm talking about their cars. But yeah, this is way too expensive. This is 30 grand for like. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. You guys can tell me if there are any uh, Jeep SRTA WK stands in the chat. You guys can explain to me why someone would pay twenty-seven thousand dollars for a two thousand eight SRTA. This is a good price too. Here we have our next example in blue. One of the rare occasions we find a blue one. This is going to be a two thousand nine. Um, off the bat, we can see that it doesn't even have HIDs. That's a problem. <laughs> this is a two thousand nine. This is the facelifted model. Without HIDs, so what does that mean? That probably means that it doesn't have any options at all. Because the HIDs were standard in the SRT1 group. So taking a look at the interior, we can see it doesn't even have dual zone climate control. Look at all these blank buttons. <laughs> this whole panel has three buttons, or four buttons, excuse me, and three knobs. And there's space for seven buttons up here, four buttons here. Four buttons here and seven more, and they're all blank. Don't get one of these. This is insane. You can see, though, they kind of made up for it. They realized that they didn't have any options, so they put it in aftermarket radio, but it looks kind of out of place. You can see no sunroof either, so definitely no SRT1 group. Definitely no SRT2 group. Not even any memory on the seats or anything like that. This is a stripper spec SRT8. Not really too sure who would buy one of these, especially given the price. It has 94,000 miles and they want $24,000 for this base model example. This is not worth it at all, in my opinion, at all. I don't even think you should consider this car because it doesn't even have the SRT1 group option. It doesn't have any, it's literally a stripper spec Jeep. I don't know if this would maybe be good if you were drag racing, you need something light, you didn't need all that extra weight in the car maybe. I'm guessing this one would be, a, yeah, exactly. This one is definitely a poverty spec. So for this poverty spec SRT8, I'd be willing to go up to $15,000. Moving on to our next one, another 2010 example. This one, it says has the SRT option group one. So I'm guessing it just has one. We can see, I just love the way black looks with the chrome wheels. This is my favorite configuration of the car. Looks pretty good. We can see off the bat, it does have the HID light. So obviously it does have the SRT1 group. Look on the interior, see what we're working with. Regular wear and tear on the bolsters. Not too much on the sides, a little bit more on the top though, but it does have 94,000 miles. So pretty regular for the amount of mileage. I'd say a little bit more than regular, actually looking at it closer. Someone of a larger stature was owning this car, it looks like. <laughs> Um, 94,000 miles has the nav. Obviously, it's SRT1. Let's look at the back. It does have the rear seat heaters as well. Does it have the rear entertainment package? I, I'm guessing it doesn't. I don't see any slots for it. That is confusing. This is the second time I've seen a 2010 with rear seat heaters, but it doesn't have the SRT2 group option because it doesn't have the... Oh. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Only 2009 SRT group, SRT, oh gosh, only 2009 SRT2 group models have the rear DVD entertainment. In 2010, they dropped the rear entertainment package for the uh, SRT option or SRT2 option group. That is really weird. That's confusing. So if you have a 2010, it could have rear seat heaters, but that comes, let's see. That Oh, yeah. So it could be SRT option two without the entertainment package if it's 2010. And that's what it looks like. This is it has HIDs. It has the rear backup camera. It has the heated rear seats. So, um, yeah, what we're looking at here, this example is going to be an SRT option group two. Unlike what they said here. Hey, yo, shout out to you, Jacob Black. What's going on, man? 
Shout out to Jacob in the chat. He's always here. So this one is actually an SRT option group two, not a one like they say. It's pretty interesting. Um, you really have to look out for when uh, people who are selling their cars do that because he really underrated his car here. He said it's an option group one and an option group two, in my opinion, is a little bit more desirable. I mean, it should be. It's an upgrade over the one. Um, let's see. Yeah, I see the backup camera is in there somewhere. I'm guessing it's under there or right here. Or, no, right here. No, it's a keyhole. I'm not sure. Anyway, SRT option group two example 2010 94,000 miles. This one is actually a great price. I'd have to agree with this. It doesn't have the rear entertainment package, but for me, I don't really care about that. It's not the highest quality system anyway. And who uses DVDs uh, for this? 1775 they're asking it as under 100,000 miles 94,000 miles and it is at 2010 with an srt2 uh group option i'd say for that price i'd say for having those options and being this amount of miles i'd be willing to go up to sixteen thousand dollars then moving on to our last example we have another 2010 that says srt option group one let's take a look and see exactly what it has exactly yeah, exactly. Clara, you're right. This one is probably the best example we've looked at so far. If you were to go with this one, obviously you have to make sure that it's good mechanically. We're just going over the options. So this is a good place to start. But once you find the car with the options you want, you obviously want to deep dive into that car specific history and really understand all the maintenance that has been done to it and how hard it was driven over its life. Going back to this, going back to this example, 2010 Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8 with the SRT option group one. Let's see if it's truly an SRT option group one, or maybe it has more. We can see it's in black with the black five star with the black five spoke wheels. And a lot of outside pictures waiting for the interior ones. Off the bat, we can see it as a sunroof. So it's at least SRT option group one. And we can see the dual zone climate control here. So that's confirming that SRT option group one. We just got to see it has the rear seat heaters as well. So this is SRT option group two keep scrolling i'm just trying to see anything else Sixty-four thousand miles low amount of miles for this one right here as you can see even with srt2 group cars they have a bunch of extra <laughs> blank buttons here which is horrible it's just one thing about like owning some an american car of this category you know you're gonna have blank buttons you're gonna have a lot of plastic it just comes with the territory too much black in your opinion. Uh, shout out to you, Crackalope. It's all good. You made it. It is all good. What have we talked about so far? We went over all the packages, obviously. We went over the problems. We went over the features of the car. But right now, we're just kind of we're just noticing how expensive these are. Like, look at this price. 30 grand. This one has 64,000 miles. Granted, it's an SRT option group two, not just a one. It's pretty much fully loaded. So... You know, it has that going for it, and it's low miles, and it's last model year, but 30 grand is way too much. I don't know about y'all, but I would not pay 30 grand for a 2010 Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT. I mean, again, let's look at the interior. We can see that on the interior, if I can get there, it's just, it's a regular American interior. Tons of plastic. The whole dash is plastic, apart from this part right here, which is wrapped in leather, which is nice, I guess, but the rest is all plastic. Yeah, not really too much going on the interior, as you can see. Especially for 30 grand. You know what I get instead for 30 grand? <laughs> an F10 M5 or an F06 M6. Would you get this or an M6 or an M5? Because <laughs> for 30 grand and 64,000 miles, I could definitely get an M6. Yep, for this one though, they're asking 30 grand and 64,000 miles, fully loaded. It's a clean example. Some people do think it's a little bit too dark. Uh, shout out to Jacob Black for thinking it's too much black, but your last name is Black. This should be just enough black for you. Um, I'd say for this one, I'd be willing to go up to $22,000. And at that price, you know, like I'd be expecting a lot, like literally the cleanest example. I want every single bit of paperwork done and it all has to come from a dealership. <laughs> Moving on to car gurus, the final place we look at ads. Hey, shout out to the nine people in here. That's the most amount of people I've ever had in here. Maybe we'll get to 10, but we'll see. Shout out to you guys. Really appreciate you guys showing support because obviously this car, this show takes a lot to do. And, you know, granted, I do like what I do. I do like talking about cars. That's the only reason why I do it every day because I don't think that anybody in their right mind would continue to do this show with eight live viewers for 70 plus episodes going consecutive days. I just love cars. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for showing support. It's greatly appreciated. 
Moving on to our next example. This one is going to be... Let me restart. Moving on to... Actually, hold on. One more time. Moving on to our next example. We have a 2007. This is going to be one in black with silver wheels. So you can see it's a pre-facelift car. Body looks okay. You can see something going on with the bumper here. It looks kind of uneven. Not sure if that's just me or it's something going on here. Interior, standard stuff. We have that dark gray or light gray, I'd have to say, interior. You can see it has the rear entertainment as well as a sunroof. So it at least has the SRT1 option group. Let's see. Let's see. Let me. I'm trying to see the rear center console because I'm trying to see what else it has. Because I believe for 2007, they introduced the SRT2 option group. But I cannot see the rear center console. I believe they did show it, though. I saw a little bit of it here. Yeah, no seat heaters. But it is a 2007. Let's take a look at the options real quick. Yeah, they had option group. Yep. Rear DVD entertainment system, heated second row seats, HIDs. All right, let's just see if it has HIDs. This is a 2008. Whoops. Goodness. Goodness gracious. So no SRT1 group for 2007. Duh. That's what I thought. And uh, yeah, so pretty much fully loaded. For a 2007, in 2008, that's what they introduced, the SRT2 group. But for 2007, this one is pretty much fully loaded. Yeah, SRT1, you have rear entertainment. And yeah, how many miles does this car have? This one has 115,000 miles, so a little bit you know, higher than what we really are looking for. I'd say for this one, you know, being 115,000 miles, being a pre-facelift car, CarGurus is correct. This is a high price. I'd be willing to go up to 13.5 for this example right here. Moving on to our next example, we have a silver one. No, actually, uh, I was going to say that this, uh, I said earlier, actually, this car is a global car. They had these cars in a lot of markets. You can find them in Europe. You can find them in Australia. Um, yeah, they sold them everywhere. So, uh, Euro SRT 8.6.1. Oh, I should have wrote Jeep. But yeah, as you can see, this one has a British plate on it and it's also right hand drive. So they did make the car for the world market, which is pretty cool. A right hand, if you could find one, like if you could import a right hand drive SRT8, that would be kind of cool. I really like seeing the right hand drive Jeeps used as mail carriers sometimes. I think that's pretty interesting. This would be a really cool mail carrier. Uh, but yeah, this is what it looks like on the inside. Completely reversed. Yep, it's going to be that, uh, and I guess a British spec car. Yep, that is, it looks like a British plate. Where are you from exactly, Jacob Black? Like, what part of Europe? Uh, but yeah, let's get back to the ads. Here we have a silver example, as I said before. Very rare to find a silver example. Usually they're in black or red. See, the interior kind of matches the exterior. It looks really bad. But we also see that it has the rear DVD entertainment system. This is 2007, so it has the rear DVD entertainment. Austria? Oh, that's cool. I've been to Austria. I've been to Austria. Um, I forget where I went, though. I went on this trip when I was, like, back in the day. It was, like, a, a Europe tour. And I went to Austria. I went to... Where did I go? I went to Italy. I went to Switzerland. I went to Germany. I went to Austria and I went to France. Those are the, on that tour. But I've been to Europe several times since then. I've been to Germany a lot. Um, yeah, actually, I've only been to Germany since then. Anyway, this one they're asking 24 grand, which is insane. It has 110,000 miles. I don't know what this guy's smoking. Uh, it's, it's clean, I guess. So it has that going for it. They don't even show really the seat wear. So maybe there's a whole bunch going on here. That, oh, actually, not really too much going on right here. I need to go to the Netherlands. I need to go to like, like Amsterdam. Yeah, I got to get out there, man. I got to go back to Europe. I think actually this year I'm going to travel a little bit. I'm going to be going to Singapore, seeing my family. Um, maybe hopefully staying out there for a little bit. That would be kind of dope if I could just do my live show from Singapore. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe I can shoot some foreign car market stuff as well because Singapore has some weird cars. It's really interesting going to other countries and seeing the cars, especially if you go to like the Far East because their cars are the weirdest. I think overall, obviously, China has the weirdest cars, but like anything JDM, anything KDM that's specifically in that region, like if you go over there, they have uh, 
you know, they have Toyota and Honda and stuff, but the models have all different names than compared to here, even though it's the same model. What's my genetic makeup? I'm half uh, Malaysian, so Malaysia, Malaysian from Singapore and half black. But going back to this super expensive, super overpriced 2007 SRT8. Um, do they say anything about it? Nope, nothing at all. For this one, having 110,000 miles, I'd be willing to go up to 13.5 for this example. Yeah, like the Toyota Crown. Even stuff as simple like a, a Corolla in Singapore is called a Toyota Atlas. The Honda Fit, that little thing is called a Honda Jazz. It's all these weird names. Like, And plus they have a whole bunch of other models too. Like, they have an Odyssey over there. Like, you know, I don't know if you guys remember the original Odyssey van where it had regular doors, not sliding doors. They have a new version of that for the JDM market. And it's like a new Honda Odyssey, but it's like an Odyssey Sport or something. I don't know how to describe it, but it has regular doors. And it's like a sporty van looking thing. That's one of the many models. Yeah, Toyota Crown. My uncle actually is a taxi driver and he had a Toyota Crown for the longest time. And he just upgraded to a Hyundai Sonata, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, but if you guys if you guys aren't familiar with Singapore and their cars are super insane, you have not only 100% tax on the car, so every car costs twice as much than it really costs. You also have to pay for a certificate of entitlement, which is kind of the right to drive or the right for your car to be on the road. And those are like 100 grand by themselves. So my uncle, I think he was in over 200 grand for his Hyundai Sonata, which is insane. And then you have to also pay the taxi company, obviously. It's hard to live out there. A lot of old people out there never retire and they work till they die. Um, but it is a booming city and they have a really good economy. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd say for this way, yeah, 13 grand. Moving on to our next one. We have, yep, 200K USD for a Hyundai Sonata. If you get like, like literally like a Porsche 911, like a GT3 is millions of dollars there. So like Lamborghinis, 3 million. Like, it's ridiculous to own a car in Singapore. The island's very small. It's only like 20-something miles wide by like 15 miles tall. So there's not a lot of space for cars. And the way they keep traffic down is to tax cars out the ass. They really make you pay so much that you don't want to drive a car. And that's how they keep the traffic down. Also, if you can't own a car for more than 10 years there, which is crazy. If you want to own a car that's older than 10 years, you have to get your COE renewed for an older vehicle, and that costs even more. They don't want any breakdowns on the highway. They don't want any old cars at all. So if you have an old car that's not used for like business purposes, not like a taxi or like a truck or something, it's your personal vehicle, and it's older than 10 years, you have to pay extra or else you're just going to destroy it or you have to you know, sell it out of the country or something. Anyway, going back to this, we have... Oh, let's go to the front page first. So moving on, we have a 2008. This is going to be the first. Uh, this is going to be the first model year of the facelift in black on the silver five spoke wheels. My favorite configuration of the car. See, it looks pretty nice. Again, facelifted vehicle. Let's take a look at the interior. See what options we have. Again, it is a facelifted car, so we have a black interior. It looks way better than the pre facelift gray interior. Off the bat, we can see it already has the SRT1 group because it has dual zone climate control as well as nav. What else can we see here? Heated seats, obviously, sunroof, obviously, it has a rear entertainment. This is a 2008, so I have to clarify the rear entertainment was included with the, yep, for the 2008, the rear entertainment was included for the SRT option group two. So we have to see whether or not this has rear heated seats or not. Which we can't see, unfortunately. They don't show the rear seats, but it has HIDs. So I'm going to assume this is a SRT option group two car. So 2008, pretty much fully loaded car. It has the rear entertainment and everything. 100,000 miles. They want 20 grand. I'd say for that, you know, it is fully loaded. It is a facelifted car. It is in a really nice spec. Black with the silver wheels. I like that. However, 20 grand, I really don't like. I think for 100,000 miles, I'd be more around the $17,000 mark. Wait, 100,000 miles. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, no, maybe around the sixteen thousand dollar mark. Let's see. If, yeah, I'll go down a little bit from that one. That one's a little bit too much. For this one, I'd say I'd be for this one being two thousand eight, pretty much fully loaded with the SRT two group, having a hundred thousand miles. I'd be willing to go up to sixteen thousand dollars. Jacob said found sixteen SRTs until twenty thirteen for sale. Most of them in the Netherlands. 
That's cool. So they, you do see them for sale. Are they like, well, you're in Austria, so it's left-hand drive. Um, but yeah, they got them over there. In fact, one of the videos I showed this morning was in some European country where they were videoing the SRT8s. Someone was on the street just showing them. Anyway, moving on to our second to last example. We have another silver one. This one has uh, this one has its headlights tinted. Not really a big fan. It's kind of like if I see headlights or taillights tinted on a car, I just know that the owner, like, I get it. When I was young, I thought that that looked cool too. I think, you know, it could look cool with like a light smoke on the taillights. But when you tint the headlights, that's just, uh, that's stepping into like <laughs> retard territory. I don't know if I can say that. I got yelled at that for saying retard once, but I'm old, so it's okay. Um, yeah, front tinted headlights are not a good sign of the overall quality and condition of the vehicle, but we will pursue or pers I don't know. We will continue and look at the car. We'll give it a chance. Interior, obviously, it's a facelift, so it's going to be a black interior. It looks actually pretty clean. You know, I could be wrong. You know, I might have made my assumptions on the guy based on you know his tinted headlights and taillights, but the interior looks all right. He looks like he took good care of it. Does it show the center console? You can see there's no seat heating here, even though it's 2009. Did they show the center console? I don't think. All right. They did not show the center console. Oh, they do right here. Okay, cool. So it's an SRT1 group car. It doesn't have the rear entertainment. It doesn't have the rear seat heating. So it is just an SRT1 group car. Um, Let's see. Oh, Kragalope said, a good vehicle to do is also the Trailblazer SS. Yep, that is actually a good point. I forgot about the Trailblazer SS. That is a good car. The Trailblazer SS was, yeah, I forgot about that. That is also a good competition. Trailblazer SS, that was the GM competition. Did Ford have a high-performance SUV at this time? I don't think so. I mean, obviously, they had, like, the Saline Explorers. Um, that's pretty rare, though. That's not really a mainline production car like these are. But yeah, I can't really think of, did Ford have a high performance anything at that time? Hmm. Not too sure. Claro said, that's why I'm glad I played Need for Speed Underground 2. Got the rice <laughs> the riceness from my body. Exactly. And Midnight Club 3. Midnight Club 3 was my shit. I love that show. Oh, the show. I love that game. I beat it like three or four times, but only if it was Dub Edition Remix, of course. You couldn't play the regular Midnight 3. You had to have Dub Edition Remix. Hey, shout out to DJ Inferno in the chat. What is good, man? Hope you're doing good, man. Maybe, you, maybe you'll win next time, but I got you. We'll, we'll try to run it again. Um, let's see. What else? I, I was going to say something, and I completely forgot. But yeah, Midnight Club 3 is literally my favorite game of all time. Like, all the songs, the, the track list from that game was insane. The amount of customization you could do in that game was insane. Like, there were so many different options. It blew my mind. Like... Plus, it was an open world game. Like car, car games weren't doing that at the time. Midnight Club was literally one of the best games to ever come out, hands down. And then, like Midnight Club Four, like Los Angeles, when that came out, it didn't have as much customization, but it was on a newer console and had better graphics. That didn't make any sense to me. It wasn't as good of a game. It had a lot of bugs. Even though, like Midnight Club Three was a little bit arcadey compared to like Gran Turismo of the time. I forget when Forza came out. But Gran Turismo 3 was definitely before Forza. But like the the physics was kind of kind of arcadey, if you want to call it that. But it was just such so, such a fun game. Like the races were fun. You could do bikes, you could do all sorts of cars. Like you could like, I don't know, you could do everything to a car. If you haven't played that game, I highly suggest like getting an emulator or something and playing that. Because it is a good time. Anyway, back to this one. 2009 SRT1 group car. Doesn't have the rear entertainment. Doesn't have the rear heated seats. Let's see real quick if it has the HIDs. It does have the HIDs, so that's good. But again, no rear entertainment. No rear heated seats. So it's an SRT1 group car. This one being a 2009. It's a facelift. 115,000 miles. They're asking 19 grand. That's way too high for not even being an SRT2 group car. Especially having 115,000 miles. I'd be willing to go up to... I mean, it's a 2009, I'd be willing to go up to uh i'd be willing to go up to 13.5 for this car it has some body damage too so yeah 13 13.5 would be where i'd be at for this example and then moving on to our final example a 2010 in black with the silver wheels this one also has tinted tail lights let's see if the headlights are tinted real quick which they don't even show of course oh they do so the headlights look good does it have hids it does have hids so uh off the bat hopefully it's an srt 
uh, two group. I mean, we don't know that because HIDs are for the SRT one. Hey, shout out to DJ Inferno. Hit that like button. Let's get to 20 likes today. This is the most people I've ever had in the chat. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all for being here and supporting. And yeah, if I, I tell me what car you guys drive, I want to know every single car you guys drive and where you're from. SRT one. See if it has the rear entertainment. It has the rear seat heating. It has HIDs. So based off of that fact, and it is a 2010, so it didn't come with rear entertainment. So this is an SRT2 group car, fully loaded, last model year. It has 143,000 miles, so high miles in this example, a little bit higher than I'm comfortable with. But if you were to look at this car and price it out, I'd say for this one, I'd be around 14.5 for this example. And that wraps it up. A ton of ads today. Two more than usual. I had two more Facebook ones. Oh, you have an RSX Type S? That's nice. I really like those. You know, it's it's funny. I'm not a Honda guy at all, but I'm starting to like these older, the older, more simple, like nostalgic Hondas are kind of getting to me. Like I really love the old CRX. Um, the, the RSX type S's are cool too. So that's dope. Is it like customized at all? You did a lot of work to it. What other cars you guys got right now? I only have my LS 430. I really miss my M6, but I had to sell it because it was not making sense financially to keep um and it had high miles in <laughs> in a span of two years for my m6 i put over thirty-five thousand miles on it not even two years probably like four like maybe like 20 months i put thirty-five thousand miles on that car i drove it till it fell apart basically i missed that car so much but it's okay we'll always get a new one i'm gonna get another one anyway but i want to get a newer one i've had it i mean i had my experience with the v10 it was nice like it's one of the best uh one of the best ways to get a naturally aspirated V10 is with an S85 and an M5 or an M6. You can get it cheaper in the M6 if you weren't aware. The M6 would go for a little bit less than the M5, which is surprising to me because the M6 is a superior car. I don't care what people say. The M6 has like a better feel to it, has a better build. It had a higher, um, higher MSRP. And if you sit on the inside, like the interiors are really different, M5 versus M6. The M6 has a really cool, like... I don't know how to describe it, but it has the door, the door tops, they have like a sharp angle to them, like on the top. So the door card goes like this on the top and that angle continues around. Have you ever seen the inside of a Bugatti Veyron? That's what it looks like. <laughs> hey, shout out to you, DJ Inferno. Man, he's on foot, but he's supporting the channel. I appreciate you so much, man. $5. That means a lot, bro. Like you didn't have to do that, but thank you for supporting the channel. You guys really keep me motivated to keep going because... You know, it's a lot of work, but, and I do love cars, but this really motivates me. E55 AMG from the Bay Area, still debating the upgrade to 2014. The 2014 is a good car. If you saw my review on it, I did an in-person review. Shout out to my man's Tampa. He let me borrow his cars. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because he runs an auto shop. So basically he rebuilds these cars. A lot of people are pointing out the panel gap issue and stuff like that. Duh, these, it was a rebuild title car that I reviewed, but he has almost every car and like, you know, rebuild title, like I'm really bougie about rebuild title cars. But when I was driving that thing, like that was the last thing I was thinking about was the fact that it was a rebuilt car. Like that felt solid. It was fast. It sounded good. Handled well. Like part of me wants to like really throw that idea out the window in terms of like these more special cars. Like when I really think about it, if I could get like a $50,000 rebuilt title Gallardo or something, that would be like a really sweet deal. Like I could be have a Gallardo, but you know, it all depends. A lot of people don't really mess with the rebuilt titles, so it's all up to you. It's a personal choice. Drew said that, oh, so you got to, wait, 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 Drew, so it's working now. So your Cherokee 2-liter turbo is working? Was it always a 2-liter turbo? Wait a minute, was it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really, like, I'm, the more I think about it, I'm like, if I get a salvage shell exotic, like, first of all, if you're really going to talk shit about me, like, in my exotic, then, like, if you don't have one, like, who cares? Oh, 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 you got your 2019, too. Okay, okay, I was about to say. So, what's what's going on with the old one, though, your project? Is it anywhere close to done? I know that was, like, a huge project. The XJ, yeah, the, the actual, the real Cherokees. I like the XJs the best. Let me just look at it. So, what you, you have an XJ coupe, right? That's a jag. Uh, 
I guess it's called a two door. It's not called a coupe. This is a SUV. So yeah, this is what Drew has. I'm gonna check it out, man, when I come up there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Your girl didn't want the LS460, so you got a Camry? Should have got a new girl. No, I'm joking. But dang, she really didn't approve of the LS460. Actually, now I think about it. Um, yeah, when I had my girl did not approve of my LS430 either. She thought it was an old man's car. Um but yeah, that was a long time ago. But I still have the LS430 and she's gone, so. <laughs> um Yeah, I don't know what to say. Like, dang, that sucks. I mean, the Camry, obviously, you're gonna have lower maintenance and lower running costs, but Camry, I hope it's a new Camry. Because if it's an old Camry, <laughs> if this is an old Camry, that sucks. <laughs> uh, what else can I say here? I mean, that pretty much wraps it up. I guess to sum up what example of the Jeep, the WK Cherokee, Cher Cher God, what, <laughs> what example WK Grand Cherokee SRT I get? I'd stay in the facelifted models, 2008 to 2010. Don't get a pre-facelift car. They seem to be more expensive anyway. I do not understand the pricing on these. So I think that um, if you were to look at your optimal one, you should get a SRT2. Obviously, that's going to be your highest package car. And if you get a 2009 or 2008, it comes with the DVD system. So that's a plus. If you get a 2010, um, it's last model year, that's a plus, but it's not going to have some of the features, which is kind of weird. I'd say that 2008, 2009 are going to be my sweet spots for the years because they come most equipped with the least amount of options ticked. So the least amount of things you have to actually make sure equals the greatest amount of actual standard features. So 2008, 2009, SRT, eight would be the best ones i'd say to try to get one try either try to get a low mile one which is kind of hard because they're kind of expensive or get one that's like 120,000 miles that has had some lifter stuff done to it in terms of maintenance it i mean it would be nice if you could find one that actually had that issue fixed but i mean it's it's an expensive repair job so i'm not sure how many of those you actually find on the market uh, but again saying that that being said the lifter issue is a problem on like a very small, small percentage of cars. So I don't think you should worry about it too much as long as the car runs and drives fine and it's in overall good condition. And of course, if you want to, I mean, this car is a little bit cheaper than the other examples we were looking at, but a PPI is also a good idea as well. So if you can get that and everything checks out, you should be pretty good. These cars, not this one, we're looking at the wrong Jeep, <laughs> but these cars. Okay, well, yeah, right here. These cars are actually pretty reliable. When compared, you know, cars of today are kind of really complicated. This one is nice and simple. American engineering. Got your naturally aspirated V8. Got your standard plasticky interior. Nothing really too much to go wrong. Let's see what you said. Drew said, I need to find out a way to highlight the chats on here. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, Drew said, I replaced a lot. Exhaust steering. Got to redo the wiring and dash. Still runs. Okay, that's good. At least it still runs. And then Jacob said, my wife not happy with my Alfa Romeo 166 3.0 V6 from 1998. Hold on, I want to see what that looks like. It's a Alfa Romeo 166. You know, one brand that I'm not really too familiar with is Alfa Romeo because we never had the... We never got really these other ones. We got some, but not like... 3.0. Okay. What do you think about that, chat? I have mixed feelings about the front of this car, I'm going to be honest. I do like the rear. I like the rear of these a lot. But the front, I know it's an Alfa Romeo thing, the triangle grill, but I don't know if this does it for me. Is it a manual? 3.0 V6. I love the engine bays on these, though. The V6 Alfa Romeo engine bays look so good. I think, what's my favorite Alfa Romeo? What's that? Yo, this, the Busso V6, yeah. yeah. What is it, a Brera or something? Yeah, I think this is my favorite one. I think this one looks good. I think they did a really good job with this front end. Com I mean, you know, relatively speaking. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Drew. That's just funny as shit. Manual and a sound. Love it. Yeah, I bet. No, those, I bet the Alfa Romeo V6s sound so good. I've seen a couple of cars in coffee. They just look so cool. But yeah, this the my favorite is going to be this Brera. I think it looks so like interesting in terms of design and the interior looks pretty cool as well that's funny you're funny drew yeah i'm coming up there next weekend so we definitely got to kick it um yeah that's cool that's, yep alfa romeo's 
they're not doing too well in America in terms of sales. I think they're actually stopping sales. Uh, for like the Stelvio and the Julia, I think they're stopping sales, <laughs> which is kind of sad. I like the Alfa Romeos. I think they're cool. I don't know why they like. I know they had like reliability issues, especially for like the early Julia Quadrifoglios. And that's why they didn't sell. Plus, they were kind of like weirdly packaged. I remember the one thing for me that I didn't like about the Alfa Romeo um, Julia is the size of the front doors. Like, if you guys are familiar with like an E90, I think those doors are really tiny. The front doors on an E90 are really small. Imagine those even smaller. That's an Alfa Romeo Julia. The doors are like really, like the door opening is really small and it's hard to get in and out. It almost reminds me of like a like a S3 size car, even though it's a little bit bigger. Love the Pontiac GTO. Which one? Like the modern GTO or like an OG, like back in the day GTO? The Tonali. Oh, yeah. But I mean, that's not a real Alfa Romeo. Isn't that just a Jeep? I mean, isn't that just a Dodge? Or is a Dodge an Alfa Romeo? The, t the Toenail. The Alfa Romeo toenail. And then you have the Dodge. The Dodge Hornet. That's what it's called. Oh, we were talking about this in the beginning of the show. Car names that turn into SUV, SUV names. The Dodge Hornet. They did it with this one as well. So this is the Dodge version of the Alfa Romeo toenail. <laughs> Tonali. As you can see, they look very similar. So is it an Alfa Romeo or is it a Dodge? What's what's the Julia there, Jacob? Yeah, but these car companies need to stop taking their, you know, car these these famous car names and turning them into SUVs. I'm tired of it. They need to stop. They need to chill. Um, yeah, I guess that pretty much covers it. The SRT8, you know, granted the prices are kind of crazy, but I'm gonna put this out there. I think the SRT8, the original, the 6.1 liter is going to be a cult classic. I think this is going to go down as a collectible item. And I think people are going to like fond over these like they do for the 90s cars, stuff like that. A lot of cars from the early 2000s, like people like the 90s cars. My favorite cars are going to be the early 2000s cars. In fact, I mean, you can go from not early 2000s, I guess late 2000s. So like 2005 to 2010. In my opinion, the best decade of cars ever is 2005 to 2015. That's when the best cars that are ever going to come out. That's when they came out and that's it. So um, yeah, if you guys agree or disagree with that, you let me know. But this is one of them. I think this car is going to be a classic in the future. The OG uh, SRT8 Jeep. People are going to love them. I love the styling. I think the styling on this looks way better than the WK2. You guys can tell me. Obviously the WK2 is going to be a lot smoother. In terms of styling, it's going to have a much sleeker look. Yeah, 2005 to 2015 is literally my favorite decade of cars. I think that's when literally everything came out. All my favorite cars came out in that time. You have you know all the good Lambos. You not only have um you not only have the Gallardo and the Mercy, but you also have the Aventador, which is my favorite Lambo. Um, the Mercy was my favorite Lambo, but I think the Aventador just looks a little bit better. And for the value, the Aventador all the way. The Mercies are way too out of price. It's kind of sad, though, because I really wanted a Mercy to be my like dream exotic car. However, I don't think it will ever happen. Like, <laughs> um, Not shout out. The, the opposite of a shout out to Ed Bolian for ruining the Mercy market. I think he has like three of them now or something. He has three gated manual LP cars, which is insane because those are worth like 800 at least. And the more he talks about it, the higher prices go for those cars. So I think I'm out of the market for an LP Mercy. I was going to be happy with an E-Gear LP Mercy, but those are even like 300 plus. If I'm going to spend that much, I it all the way. What else came out in 2005 to 14? Oh, yeah, the M6s. Um, yeah, the M3s, the E46s, M3s is also part of that. It's just a really good range of cars. Everything that, like, in my mind, that's literally Halo cars came out in that time. The Ram SRT10. Yeah, I mean, I could do a video on that, too. The Ram SRT10. People, yeah, do pe those are also going to be classics. They kind of already are. They kind of messed up, though. They didn't put the manual in the quad cab or, like, the four-door version of the Ram SRT10, which was a huge mistake. 
So only the, the, the short bed single cabs have the uh, manual transmission. Magnum. The Magnum is also a good car. I mean, this I wouldn't say it's a good car, but in terms of quality, but it's like a notable car, respectable car. The Magnum definitely held its own in the lineup. It was sad they didn't make another Magnum or like a Chrysler version. Actually, they did make a Chrysler version in Europe. The Chrysler 300C Wagon, which is interesting. They had one of those in Europe, which was a Chrysler Magnum, but they didn't have that here. If they made a Hellcat Wagon, that would have been the end of it. That would have been dope. That would have been like a bucket list. Like, not a bucket list, but that's, that would have been in the same group as an RS6. And people hold RS6 Avants in high regard. Okay, cool. I mean, I don't know what else to say. You guys, uh, we've talked a lot today. Jeep SRT8, as I mentioned, is going to be a classic. So if you really want one, I suggest getting one. Um, I don't think you're going to lose anything in terms of value with these. I don't think the values of them are going to go much lower than they are. There's people like them too much, and they have too much road presence. So, yeah. If that pretty much wraps it up. If you guys have any other questions, I'll stick around for a little bit longer. We can talk a little bit more if you want. But if not, I'm going to head out. It's Friday. I'm trying to get my weekend on. Well, at least my weekend day on. Usually, Friday, the rest of Friday after the show is my time off. And then I got to work Saturday, Sunday. Then Monday through Friday again. So, looking forward to that. But, yeah. Shout out to the nine people that are in the chat and stuck around to the end. Again, I will say this. I appreciate y'all. Y'all make this worth doing. So, thank you. It's, it's so dope that, you know, you know, a month or two ago, I didn't know any of you guys. Now I got people in the chat. We can talk about cars. This is awesome. So, yeah. Hope you guys have a great weekend. If there's nothing else to be said, I will see you guys on Monday. Oh, actually, we'll go over the schedule for next week so we know what to expect. Okay, cool. Next week's going to be more exciting. I'm bringing back some exotic cars. Um, any JDM videos? I did a JDM week like three weeks ago. Um, you know what? I think not next week, but the week after that, I'll do some JDM cars. Um, let's see. I can. So these are the JDM cars I have. Well, not JDM, but like Japanese cars I hear on the, that I have here on the list. I have the 350Z that I. Oh, cars I haven't done. I have the 350Z, 3000 GT. The Toyota MR2. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of JDM cars. So those are coming in the future. Those are going to come the week after next. Next week, though, I'm going to be going over the McLaren 650S. We're going to do the LP Gallardo. We did the pre-LP before. We're going to go over the C6 ZR1, the 997 GT3, so the Porsche 997 GT3, and then finally the Ferrari FF. So... Look forward to that next week. I hope to see you guys there. And yep, as always, peace. Have a good weekend, y'all.